On the 48 hour Camaro, we use 18 by 12 in the rear and 18 by 10s in the front. You may ask, how can you possibly get that big of a wheel and tire in a Camaro? Well, actually it's done all the time. With the different configurations of the axles and the suspension, and Brett's actually done a custom suspension up front and able to get that 18 by 10 up front. And we can make these rims in any offset or width that you need. This is a GA3, and it's a GA3 because it has a center cap. That's really the only difference. Or R, this would be a GA3R here. This area is machined out for weight. It's our newest design. It's built for strength and lightweight, and we, uh, we actually machine out I-beams. Uh, this reduces the weight of the wheel, and, but it also makes it stronger. We use titanium fasteners on the backside, and we machine out any unnecessary part of aluminum, and it just happens to look nice as well. These wheels are super, super strong. They have an actual load rating of 2,100 pounds. And you ask, why would you have a 2,100 pound load rated wheel on a car that only weighs like 3,000 pounds? And that's because when you have that type of tire and, uh, and those type of forces, the load rating is going to really actually drop down considerably from 2,100 pounds to more like 1,700, 1,600. And if you went to a track type tire, it can sometimes cut that load rating in half. So these wheels are developed to race on the track, they're developed to race with heavy vehicles, lots of power. You can hammer them on all day long for a lifetime, you're never going to have a problem. It's, it's a little different. You think the 67 Camaro, we've got a matte bronze rim shell and a satin black center. Uh, when Brett called and, and said that he wanted that finish, I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't so sure. It's a 67 Camaro, but we take a look at it with the, with the color of the gold color of the calipers, with the bare calipers. And the yellow car, the, the matte bronze actually looks pretty good. I think Brett had a vision there, and, it, and uh, we were able to help him with that vision. Now, obviously, they can be customized any way you want. Uh, if you want a bright pink rim shell and a green center, we can do that too. You just need to know how to take the right measurements and know exactly what you need, and uh, we can make the wheel fit the car perfectly. Now, Brett is able to fit an 18 by 10 in the front of the Camaro, which is pretty tough to do, but he's designed this custom suspension and cleared out some stuff out of the way in order to get that 10 inch wheel in there. So you ask, what are the dimensions that we need in order to make that wheel? We try to make it easier for you. If you go to our website, you can download this form, and it pretty much outlines all the dimensions that we're looking for. Front spacing, rear spacing, caliper clearance, caliper height, hub diameter, and hub height. And it kind of, there's a diagram that shows you where those dimensions are and what we need. If we have all that information, chances are we're going to be able to make a wheel that fits. First, we need, the, we need the front spacing and the rear spacing. And the rear spacing is the measurement from where the wheel actually sits, the mounting pad, to the innermost part where it could potentially hit something. So if you put a, a straight edge up against the mounting face, that's measuring probably about 11 inches. The front's done um, the opposite way. It would be done from the inside of the fender, what it needs to clear, and that's measuring about four inches. The hub has to be measured with calipers. You can't really measure that with a tape measure. It has to be very, very accurate because we make all of our wheels hub-centric. So it needs to be done with a precision tool like a dowel caliper or something like that that's made to measure a diameter. That should be 2.78 because it's a Chevrolet, and it is. One thing that a lot of people forget is the hub height. And this is, this is the hub height. And a lot of people don't understand why we need that measurement. If you want a wheel that has a cap, we have to build that wheel with a big enough hub that it clears this cap area. So you want to get a pretty accurate measurement on that, especially if it's somewhat tall. This is measuring about an inch and three quarters, which is something that we can easily clear. We have about two and a half to two and three quarters inches of clearance on most of our wheels. Caliper clearance, or sometimes called caliper overhang, is the measurement from the pad, you know, how, how, how far this overhangs the wheel mounting flange. And then the caliper height is how tall this is, what's the largest diameter out uh, on the brake as opposed to the center of the hub. And this has about three quarters of an inch of caliper overhang. If you're trying to measure to the center of the hub, as long as you get us a pretty close diameter, this looks like it's about seven and a half inches. Now, an easier way to do all this brake measuring is if you work with a, with a uh, quality brake manufacturer like Bear, they do the best job on this. You can just go to their website and get all those brake dimensions email to you in a PDF form and you can just email that to us and we'll take all those dimensions off there. They'll be super accurate, they'll be exactly what they are and you won't have to take all those measurements. We'll just need your back clearance in the front space. And uh, that's how you measure for a wheel. You do the same thing uh, for the back as you do the front.